Hello. The fate of the global economy has been one of the main stories, if not the main story, of 2010, and will remain very much at the top of the agenda in 2011. At the centre of debate has, of course, been our chief economics commentator, Martin Wolf, who has examined all the issues from quantitative easing in developed countries, currency wars across the world, continuing low interest rates and bond yields, inflation worries, and the ongoing crisis in the eurozone. Well, Martin, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, first of all, before we analyse um, what's gone wrong,、um, let's talk about the global economy in、uh, 2011. How are we going to fare? Well, first of all, we don't know. I always say this at this point. I mean, the uncertainty is always huge, and it's a very good idea to remember this. However, <laughs> however, however, that said, I think the most plausible outcome is one of continuing recovery in the developed countries, with some big、uh, question marks. But the big developed countries are doing quite well,、uh, but not very strong. We're talking probably two to three percent growth in the U.S., maybe one to two percent growth in the eurozone. Germany looks much stronger than that. Japan is, is looks as though it's going to recover. The emerging countries are doing very, very well. So the pl plausibly we'll have, it, you know, with luck, a pretty strong year, and things will look a bit better a year from now than they do now. I mean, that's all the excitement in the emerging markets. Still,、um, is the world relying on growth in those countries? Well, they're not the engine of growth for the whole world. They're not big enough to pull the developed countries on their own. Ultimately, it will be demand within the developed countries that will pull them, and that will—that、uh, is a big question mark. But the—I I think there's a reasonable chance. I mean, much better than a reasonable chance. It's overwhelmingly probable that the big emerging countries will continue to grow strongly next year. They've got through the crisis very well, and because they are—they have an internal dynamic. Different sorts of dynamics in China and India, but a strong internal dynamic, and that pulls a lot of other countries because they're demanding commodities. So that's giving a tremendous boost to exports from commodities and the prices of commodities. And it does, of course, affect some developed countries. Germany, which I mentioned already, is clearly doing very well out of exporting to these new. Driving economies in the world. Let's turn to the United States because after a,、um, a dramatic slump、uh, last year, it has recovered now.、Um, how much of that is down to the fiscal stimulus in the U.S. and what happens? When that stimulus is removed, well, actually, the fiscal stimulus I think was pretty small.、Uh, if you actually look at it carefully, and you look at the whole of government, particularly, so you include the states who are cutting back very much, and the states are a big part of government spending in the U.S. There really has been remarkably little fiscal stimulus.、Uh, nearly all the, the the deficit in the U.S., as was true in the U.K., was really just the so-called automatic stabilizers, just the result of the crisis. I think far more important was that they saved the financial system. The financial system has begun to generate greater confidence. It's been willing to lend a bit, and above all, monetary policy has been so fantastically aggressive. Not only in the U.S., actually everywhere, but the Fed has clearly led this, and that with very low interest rates,、uh, uh, uh, very aggressive policies、uh, earlier in the crisis towards the credit markets. They're financing a lot of the housing in the U.S. That has helped, I think, more than, much more than fiscal policy. What will fiscal tightening mean? Well, actually, in the U.S., there isn't going to be any fiscal tightening, or not much.